What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be running through the continuity of circuit protective conductors test for radial circuits. We're gonna be talking about the process as well and the science and stuff like that. I'm just giving you an insight into the test procedure. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe and hit that bell button. Yeah, let's uh, run the intro. So today we're gonna to cover continuity testing or R1 plus R2 testing or just R2 testing for radial circuits. Ring final circuits are tested completely differently and this will be covered in a separate video. As electricians, the regulations require us to do two things. So the first thing is regulation 411.3.1.1 requires that installations provide protection against electric shock using ADS to have a CPC run to and terminated at each point in the wiring and at each accessory. An exception to this is made for a lamp holder having no exposed conductive parts. So basically you need to take an earth to every joint, every point, every accessory of a circuit and that's required by the regulations. Second thing that we're required to do as electricians is regulation 643.2.1 and that requires that a continuity check be carried out on all protective conductors. This includes the earthing conductor, the protective conductors of all circuits, all main protective bonding conductors and where applicable all supplementary bonding conductors as well. So basically not only do we need to make sure there's a CPC circuit protective conductor at all points of the circuit all accessories but we also need to test it at all points to verify its continuity. So because of these two regulations we have the continuity test. Now two methods have been widely adopted they're very similar but also quite different however they do achieve pretty much the same result. Now before we get into those two methods I just wanted to talk briefly about the science of what we are doing. So using a low resistance ohmmeter or a multifunction tester set to the low resistance ohmmeter setting or the continuity setting, we're effectively measuring the resistance of the CPC. Now we're either doing that alone via an R2 test or via an R1, R2 test, we're actually measuring the line conductor and the CPC conductor to get a, you know, sort of combined value there. But what you're doing is you're measuring that resistance to make sure that one, you have, you know, no discontinuity, it's, it's there everywhere you need it to be throughout the circuit but also any high resistance joints or dodgy connections basically will also flag up come through in the wash whilst you're testing because you know as you move through the circuit you'll get an abnormally high reading or something like that and then you'll be able to look into that that's why it's a very important part of the initial verification process now the r1 and r2 method which we'll get into also can confirm polarity polarity is another required check and test in the sequence of tests quite further down however you can nip that in the bud for certain certain circuits in certain cases by doing an R1, R2 test and making sure you just do some extra steps there. We'll cover that all when we get into that method. It's important to consider that although we are testing for the continuity of the circuit protective conductor, there may be parallel paths there. So via a metal enclosure, a bit of metal containment or you know building fabric or something like that, there may be an alternative path that the tester chooses to take, thus giving you a different or lower value and that's just something you need to consider as an inspector. Now it's not always practical to remove these parallel paths, that's not always the case. So it's just something again you need to consider, make notes of and see if you can get around, make some considerations, maybe adopt a different test method to navigate those sort of issues. I just wanted to mention that because I think it's quite important. Continuity test is also considered a dead test, no live conditions whatsoever. On a new installation the test is actually going to be carried out prior to energization so there shouldn't be any trouble there. However if you're doing a period of inspection or you know trying to achieve an EICR or a satisfactory one then you're going to need to isolate the circuit to carry out this test so therefore you'd want to follow the safe isolation procedure. And I've actually got a full video going through that process which I'll link up here if you want to check that out. So continuity test method one the shorting out method R1 plus R2 method. Firstly you need to use a low resistance ohmmeter or a multifunction tester configured to this setting. It's also important to know your leads so this effectively tests the resistance of the leads of the tester and removes that from the equation to give you the most accurate result. Now you can also just test the resistance of the lead, mark that value down and remove it at a later date. However, most modern testers have the null function and I'd certainly recommend doing that just to remove that extra step of the process. So test method one requires the inspector to create a temporary link 
between line and CPC. Now this can be achieved via connecting the line and CPC together in the breaker, line and CPC together, or you can use a lead, a shorting out lead to connect the two. The leads are pretty good because you don't always have to disconnect everything depending on you know the fuse board you're working in and stuff like that. However, it doesn't really make much of a difference and you are also going to have to null that lead too. So you have to add that into your initial nulling process. But yeah, you can use whatever method you want as long as you do it safely. Now that you've got the line and CPC linked together at the origin within the consumer unit or the distribution board, you now wanna run through every single point of that circuit, every accessory, every socket, every light switch or whatever and test between line and CPC. This confirms that you've got continuity of the CPC at every point in the circuit. And also you might have a radial circuit with legs branching off. So you've got multiple end of lines there. That's why you need to test at every point just to confirm you've got it everywhere. Now, as you move further away from the origin of the installation, further down the circuit, you would of course expect these readings to get higher and higher. And ultimately, when you get to the furthest point or the end of line, you're gonna have your highest result. And this is gonna get jotted down in the R1, R2 section of the schedule of test results for that circuit. And that is the test complete. While testing circuits, including functional switching or, or accessories and stuff like that, you can actually achieve the polarity test at the same time as doing the continuity of CPC test. So imagine a light switch, you would actually test between the live side of the Edison screw lamp holder and a CPC, flick that light switch. So not only are you seeing that you've got that polarity where it's breaking that line conductor before it goes up to the light fitting, but you're also checking that the line or the live part, sorry, of the lamp holder is indeed where the line is connected. You wouldn't want that cross polarity there because yeah, you're gonna have quite a large uh, exposed live part if you did that same you know that's one example but it goes for all sorts of accessories isolators anything like that you can just functionally switch it whilst doing this test and uh, yeah you can achieve polarity which is another test ticks off the list most modern installations or circuits within them will have electronic or electromagnetic controls or uh, switches and stuff like that accessories think of like LED drivers dimmers smart home tech and what that's going to do or may do is it might actually present a open circuit on the line conductor when the circuit isn't energized because they rely on AC input to sort of work. So what you're going to have there is obviously lots of breaks in the circuit which you aren't going to be able to reinstate without jointing or removing the devices and of course that can be a pain. So there is a alternative test method which is exactly the same however it's between neutral and CPC because most of these electromagnetic or electronic devices have solid neutral links therefore it won't be broken even if the circuit's dead. And what you can do is achieve an RN, R2 value, which is uh, just as good if, if that's the only way you can do it. And it still confirms some polarity and of course, continuity of CPC throughout the circuit. So yeah, if you're running into a circuit with loads of electronic devices, you've got all those breaks in the line conductor, dot this method, get the result. And then uh, yeah, when you go back to all the other circuits that aren't as affected due to having different accessories, you can go back to, you know, the traditional R1, R2 method. Once you have the R1, R2 result, Results, you can actually cross-reference these with the resistance of copper conductors data held in Appendix B. There's basically tables that will give you resistance per meter. You can calculate an approximate value and then compare that to your test result. It may be different due to contacts and terminals of accessories and stuff. But it's just a way of approximately verifying your test results and it's quite good to do that. Also, if you apply the R1, R2 value and actually add it to the external impedance of ZE value, you'll actually have the earth volt loop impedance value for that circuit. So this is a way of calculating that value without conducting a live test. Sometimes that's more convenient or it can even just be used to verify the ZS test when you do it. So again, something to consider there. And that is why this is probably my favorite of the two test methods because you just get a lot more value there from conducting pretty much the same test. But yeah, let's get on to the next one. So continuity testing test method two, R2 testing or the Wander lead method. So this test method is actually very similar to R1, R2 testing. However, instead of using the line conductor to achieve our continuity, we're actually gonna be using a wandering lead instead. And that's why this is just the R2 method, because by the time you remove the resistance of the wander lead of the extension lead, just left with the resistance of the CPC alone, and that's why it's called R2. Now, 
Now again, you're going to need a low resistance ohmmeter or a multifunction tester configured to this setting, but you're also going to need, as I mentioned, a wonder lead. Now this is effectively an extension lead for your test probe. They come in 5, 10, 15, 25, 50 meters, all sorts of sizes. And that's why you call it a wonder lead because you connect one end up to the board and then you go for a walk. Just as before, it's important to know the, the test leads of the instrument, but it's also, of course, very important to know the wonder lead too. 50 meters a lead is going to be quite the resistance. You don't want that influencing any of the results you're about to get. So yeah, you want to know that using the null feature or determine the resistance of the wonder lead, write that down and remove it from any results you get further down the line. So one end of the tester is going to be connected to the CPC at the origin of the installation. So to the earth bar, or if you're worried about parallels, maybe remove that and just connect it onto the CPC itself. And then the other end, the longer lead, you're going to go around the whole installation again through every point of that circuit. However, you're just going to be making contact with the CPC again. So effectively testing between the CPC at the consumer unit and the accessory. Now, as you make your way through the installation, further away from the origin, and of course, further down the circuit, that result should get higher. However, you may have parallel paths there, which might influence the result and they'll probably bring it down lower. So that's just something to consider there. But yeah, as you make your way through the installation, you're gonna find the end of line is probably the highest result. And you're gonna mark that down in the R2 section of the schedule of test results for that circuit. And that again, is the continuity test complete. So there's a couple of things to consider when using the R2 method, that it's gonna be more susceptible to being influenced by parallel paths, or it is in my experience. You are not gonna be able to confirm polarity of you know, line conductors and making sure that all switching devices are in the line conductor only and all that sort of stuff. You're not gonna be able to do any polarity sort of checks with it. And you're also not gonna be able to combine that result with your ZE to achieve a calculated ZS. Now, now this isn't a deal breaker and in some cases an R2 test is uh, so much better than an R1 R2 test, especially if you're running around an old building with lots of exposed light fittings and stuff like that. You can just run around with a wonder lead on a pole, you know, get all those results. The R2 test should not be neglected. However, these are just some things to consider and this is probably why I always adopt if I can and if it's not a unique situation like I mentioned before, the R1 R2 method. So there you have it guys, that is both test methods for testing continuity of circuit protective conductors for radial circuits. So again, just want to stress radials only, ring final circuits are done completely differently and I'll cover that in a separate video. Please remember with R1, R2 testing or R2 testing, isolate if you have to, um, make sure you're working safely. Consider parallel paths as well, they may influence results and more often than not they do uh, on existing installations. Make sure you test at every point of the circuit, make sure that you do polarity testing as well. You may as well do it while you go. Save yourself that extra test further down the line. Just makes sense to do it at that point. And finally, make sure that you check your results, whether it's in Appendix B or comparing them to a ZS result, previous readings. Just make sure you check that because it's quite easy to find inconsistencies just by doing a quick uh, yeah, cross-reference. As always, hopefully you found this video insightful, you've learned something, or you've just brushed up on the, on the procedure for R1, R2 testing, R2 testing. But yeah, if you're liking content in the workshop or me out on site, any of the stuff I do on the channel, then yeah, please like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, hit that bell button too to stay up to date with all the content I've got coming out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.